Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're going to take a look at the Boker Urban Trapper Petite. And it is very certainly a petite knife. Um, this thing is itty bitty, and I, I love it. It's one of my favorite knives in my entire collection. It's probably right up there at number one, honestly. And there are a few concessions on this knife, I'm not going to lie, there's there's a decent bit that I don't like about it, but the things that I like, I really freaking like them. So we'll go over all that in just a moment, but first, let's do some size comparisons so you can see just how tiny this really is. First up, we'll go ahead and compare it with the Ruger LCK, the CRKT Ruger LCK. So it's kind of like a mini version of the Ruger LCK in that it is... Uh, small, slim, kind of lightweight knife. It is quite a bit lighter though, I will say that. And we'll go ahead and compare uh, open length here, and it's going to get dwarfed. So you can see the blade is fairly short. However, to be honest, you get about the same uh, cutting length, maybe an eighth of an inch less, and, and a lot less handle. Um, ergonomically, the Ruger LCK is obviously going to be superior, but this thing is really, really good for the size. Let's go ahead and bring in the CRKT Pilar. We'll go ahead and compare, um, just so you can get a, an idea here of the closed size comparison. Similar in length, this is much, much thinner, a lot narrower, and uh, it, it, it definitely shows. It's also significantly lighter. It's probably a fifth of the weight or a fourth of the weight, somewhere around there. Let's go ahead and do an open size comparison here. The knife is rocking back and forth like crazy because of the clip. So you can see when they're open, obviously the uh, Boker gets a lot more blade length. And that's including the, uh, the choil on the Pilar with very, very similar handle length. That's just the, the nature of these two knives. They're very, very different. Um, this one's a lot thicker, a lot more of a uh, kind of a hard use knife. And this is a lot more of a uh, light use uh, office, everyday carry kind of, kind of piece. Let's compare it now to the ZT0450CF. Again, this this ZT is not a big knife at all, but it looks very, very big next to this Boker. And when it's opened, it looks even bigger. So you can see again, the ZT is a super slim, super small knife. This knife is just ridiculously tiny. And for one last size comparison here, um, one of the larger knives I own, this is the Spyderco Spidey Chef. It will not quite fit in frame, and I do apologize for that. But you can get the gist of it. Oddly enough, in terms of thickness, they're uh, they're fairly similar, actually. Uh, I believe the Spidey Chef is just a tad bit thicker. Actually, no. They're right at the same. Very interesting. So let's go ahead and go on to what I like about this little knife. All right. So my favorite thing about this just hands down the uh, size and the weight the the knife is super super small the handles less than three and a half inches the blade is 2.75 I'm not gonna read out specs to you here but it's that's great it's super super compact it's really really light it's really thin it absolutely disappears when you put it into your pocket and uh, I love that there are a few concessions with that size obviously you know, most people aren't going to be able to get a, a good... I can get three fingers really good on here. Um, the fourth has nowhere to go. Although I do usually put it there. So generally what I'll do is I'll kind of tilt the knife back. Group with my thumb there. And that gives me enough purchase to do whatever I'm going to do with it. Again, you're not really going to be hard using this knife. It's not really suited for that. And part of that's because of the blade stock. I really like the blade stock thickness on here. It's uh, 0.1 inches. And it's very, very thin. The details on the blade though are really, really nice. The uh, the grind is really, really good. I like it a lot. Um, I believe it's just a, a flat grind there, but it's it's nice. It's very well done. The spine is crowned, which is one of my favorite features on a knife. 
Makes it a lot better when you're having to choke up on it a little bit, which you'll be doing a lot on this knife because your finger is probably quite a bit longer than this knife is. Um, so it's very easy to do really detailed, fine work with it. And the blade has a nice finish. Overall, the knife is very attractive in my opinion. You have Brad Zinker's logo there. You have the VG10 steel. The Boker logo is not great, but it could be worse. You know, it's not that big overall, but on this blade, it looks pretty big. The carbon fiber on here is really, really pretty. It's probably my favorite carbon fiber. It's just the way they've rounded the scales off. looks fantastic. It's a titanium liner lock as well. I really, really like the titanium finish on here. It's kind of a dark, uh, stonewashed gray color. I was going to have this anodized, the titanium scales, but something came up, so I, I can't have that done now. That's all right. Um, I still really, really like it, and it kind of keeps the, the sleek aesthetic that way. This is a knife that, in my opinion, is meant for you to notice, but no one else to really pay attention to. And that's great. Um, that works for me very certainly. I'm not really trying to attract attention to myself, especially when I am using a knife. So having something this small, this sleek, this compact, it's fantastic for that. Overall, the appearance is very nice. In my opinion, this is kind of the definition of a gentleman's knife. It it has a little bit of bling to it, but it's small, it's compact, and it's pretty well made. The clip is a very good deep carry clip. I don't like the appearance of it. We'll come back to that later, but it does work very well. It's very, very functional and it does keep the knife from sticking out of your pocket at all. You can see it comes just a little bit above the end of the, uh, the liner there. So no one's gonna see this in your pocket. To be honest, no one's gonna see anything in your pocket at all apart from the clip. It's so slim and compact, it really does. If you're looking at your pocket, you probably can't tell you have this because it disappears. If you keep anything else in your pocket, it's gonna absolutely dwarf whatever, you know, whatever appearance this is making there. The flipper tab is pretty nice. It does have this jimping on the back, which I don't understand at all. If I can get my camera to focus there. Sorry, this knife is a little dirty. I do use it quite a bit. Um, I don't really get the point of that. I guess you could kind of do it that way, although it seems pretty impractical. However, this edge right here is pretty sharp, that little corner there. So I can get enough to flick that out just fine. I really like the flipper tab on this. It's, it's nice. Um, I like how it how they fit that there. The fit and finish overall on this knife are pretty good. Um, everything slides together like it should. The centering is really, really good. It's just, uh, it's a well-finished knife, and for the price, it very certainly should be. But overall, the knife in appearance and function is, is pretty good. Let's go ahead and go on to what I'm a bit more neutral towards. First thing up is this pocket clip. I love how it carries, I really do. But I think it would look a lot better with this little spoon shape if they just kind of, I don't know, just kind of cut it off made it a straight line I think that would look a lot better um, that's just my opinion or if they made it shorter kind of maybe something like this because this this clip is huge on this knife it's gargantuan on this knife overall it's not that big of a clip honestly but on this knife it's very very big it's actually longer than the Ruger than the CRKT Ruger LCK god I hate that name um, it's longer than that clip which I find very very odd because the knives are the knives are you know, much different sizes. They should really work on the clip size on this. And I just find that spoon shape to be super unattractive. Just an opinion. The steel is okay. At this price, I really expected more. But it's it's not bad. Um, VG10 is okay. Very rust resistant. Very, very rust resistant. But it doesn't hold an edge super long. It is fairly easy to sharpen. But that's yeah, there. Um, I kind of wish that the closing of this knife is a bit smoother. There's no cutout for the detent ball to, there's not like a detent ball ramp, I guess is what I'm saying, because when you click past the uh, the detent ball, it kind of just, it's kind of a, a sticking motion. It's very weird, I don't like it very much. Now if you make sure the lock is closed all the way down, it's gonna close just great, but it's it's not perfect. The lock bar is okay. There's not a lot to get at here, although it is textured, so that certainly helps. But I, um, I kind of wish they'd done something else with it, or decrease the tension. One of the two, because 
it takes a, not a lot of force to open. It does take a decent amount, though, and there's not a whole lot to grip onto here. Making closure not one of the best things, in my opinion. It takes a little bit more strength than I would like at this size. And that's probably not the only thing I wish they would change about the lock bar. It's, other than that, it's just fine. Let's go ahead and go on to what I actually dislike about this knife. Oh, boy. Okay. Okay, here we go. What do I dislike about this knife? First up is the price. Um, this knife was cheaper when I got it. I paid one ten for it. Um, it is currently on Blade HQ's site about one hundred and thirty-two dollars. Wow. Okay. Um, I would, unless you just love this carbon fiber, which I really do. It's really really nice. It's very very pretty carbon fiber. It's really really nice. Like I'm just gonna show you one more time just how how gorgeous that is. Very, very attractive carbon fiber. But you should totally pay like $20 less for the G10 model. Um, just my opinion. These are very, very small bits of carbon fiber. Or the Coca Bolo. You can get this in a very, very nice wood finish, which I probably would have picked it up in if they'd had it in stock where I went. They didn't. They have this in the G10, and I vastly prefer the look of this. And at the time, it wasn't that bad of a difference. It was 90 versus 110. You know, but when you're talking 110 versus 130, for some reason, it just seems a bit more severe. So if you're in love with these scales, you know, 130 is what you're going to pay. <laughs> and I just don't get that. I understand it's titanium. I understand it's carbon fiber. But $130, you can get a much bigger titanium carbon fiber knife. Much, much more material with a better steel. I, I don't understand um, why they're using... I know Boker uses a lot of VG10 as it is, but... There's no point. You know, you could probably get titanium carbon fiber and S35VN at this price from other companies. Boker's a little overpriced. I think everybody kind of knows that. And they just accept it. And it's a little frustrating, but I mean, it is what it is. So, you know, what are you going to do? Last thing I dislike about this knife is the screws are thread locked shut. So how does that affect you? Well... Say you want to get these awesome, awesome liners anodized for just a little, little touch of color, just an outline around your carbon fiber to make make it contrast a bit more. Say you want to get it done in like a nice uh, a blue green or something like that to just really, really show it off. Um, you're gonna have a bit of trouble because to get to the screws of the knife that are actually on the actual liner, so for the back spacer and the pivot you got to get past these scale screws. This side came off just fine for me. These two screws in the clip, though, will not come out. And you can probably see I've all but stripped them out completely, especially that it's specifically this bottom one. It's just that one screw it will not come out. Uh, if you guys have any tips for removing that, please let me know. It's very, very frustrating, and I really want to get these anodized. But they're okay, you know, the way they look now. But it, I just uh, I think it would look better. So disassembly on this knife is going to be difficult, to say the least. What you can do, I don't recommend this, I'm not going to tell you to do it, but you can do what I did, which is to remove this scale, um, unscrew this scale, and then undo the pivot on the side, and you can kind of just bend the frame ju just enough, just enough to get the blade out, clean it, oil it, put it back together, um, it's a little nerve-wracking. Again, I would not recommend doing this ever, but if you need to, you can. Personally, I would just take some uh, compressed air, spray it through here, because this knife is, especially this knife, this knife is really dirty. I carry it a lot. But um, I'd spray some compressed air through here and just oil it. Good to go. I probably wouldn't disassemble this unless you just have to. And if you do, be very careful about stripping out the screws. All right, on to the conclusion. What do I think about the Boker Urban Trapper Petite? liner lock carbon fiber i love it this is one of my favorite knives i own it's just it's good some stuff is okay some stuff is really nice um honestly it's the probably the form factor more than anything that appeals to me um, the materials are, are good you know the fit and finish in certain spots is good other spots not so much but it, it's just nice um blade is really really pretty the, the light catches it very very well it's just a machine finish but it's kind of polished 
I don't know. It just the whole knife looks very very classy to me. Especially if you flip it over. Well, no, because then you have the big clip. It looks classy though, especially when it's closed. We're just gonna close it. Very classy looking knife. Very nice. The carbon fiber has really good pattern on it. And if you can find it at a reasonable price, this is a, in my opinion, a perfect EDC knife. There's not a lot that I do day to day that you can't do with this. Opening boxes, opening letters, opening plastic, cutting lighter stuff, opening bags of dog food or people food or whatever you do throughout your day, it's probably fine. If you're cutting into wood, don't use this. You're going to break it. Um, if you're cutting into other knives, don't use this. You're going to break it. But in general, for light everyday carry use, this is absolutely perfect. It's there when you need it, disappears when it's not, and it's just, it looks good doing it. It's fantastic. I really, really like this knife. Do I suggest purchasing it? If all, if, if everything I've said doesn't bother you and you're still super excited about this knife that's literally like the size of a finger, you go ahead and you get this knife. It's fantastic. I love it. But maybe try to pick it up at a slight discount because $132 is a bit steep. I think around mm, 80 to 100. Yeah, definitely pick it up. 130, probably not. Um, so good luck getting one of these if you're interested. If you have any questions about it, let me know down below. If you like what you've seen here, subscribe and check out my other stuff. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks, guys.